uh, to really low prices, killing off these new industries that are essential. Uh, so I think the way forward, in a, in a political sense, is there has to be a carbon tax on non-renewable carbon uh, to disincentivize people from burning this carbon that's non-renewable uh, that is going to take us down this route that I think uh, people have, e even the Bush administration recognizes uh, that we're in the realm of climate change uh, due to carbon going into the atmosphere. If they understand it, I think the rest of the world can. Uh, at a uh, conference called Life, What a Concept, uh, Freeman Dyson, who's now in his 80s and extremely heretical, uh, basically challenged Richard uh, by saying evolution is now back to prebiotic stage of communal horizontal gene transfer uh, and with an interlude of what he would call the Darwinian moment. Uh, Richard rebutted that in an email. Uh, it's rather exciting reading and you can get it on the EDGE website and download it. But uh, the question that I have is um, uh, Dyson maintains that evolution is now uh, man-made. It's, it's cultural rather than uh, Darwinian. Uh, open source, uh, communal. Uh, do you have any... You talk, you know, remember, he was talking about the difference between intellectual property and open source. So, so all evolution is based on selection. So we have, as species have been affecting the direction evolution, whether we want it to or not, for some time by changing the environment. Uh, now we can do it in a deliberate, hopefully thoughtful fashion, uh, by deliberate design. But that deliberate design still has to be followed by uh, selection. Uh, but looking back at, at how even the early processes of evolution that Richard's been writing about for, for so many years. Uh, when we look at that same experiment we did with transplanting a genome from one species to another, uh, so many people that uh, try to argue against evolution on a religious basis try to stick to this uh, point mutation and selection uh, mode, the most limited version uh, of Darwinian evolution, to, to point out how complexity couldn't occur from that. What we see with chromosome transplantation is we can get a million changes in a species in an instant. And not only does this happen just by our work in the lab, looking back in history, we see major species evolution was from species taking on new chromosomes. When they take on a new chromosome, it's like adding a new uh, DVD full of software to your computer it instantly changes the capabilities and the robustness of what you can do. Our cells can do that. Uh, uh, I guess it's it by definition open source because it happens in the environment uh, almost on a daily basis. But we have real-time Darwinian evolution taking place in our lungs. Uh, everybody in this room has a different species of bacteria in their lungs uh, because as your immune system attacks these organisms, uh, there's built-in mechanisms to the genetic code where they're constantly making minor variations, making different proteins to fool our immune system. So selection, this is case selection by our antibodies, uh, and our physiology is changing those. We're changing selection of the species, perhaps ones that will survive in a higher CO2 environment. Uh, as we sailed around the world, I think one of the most disturbing things was we could barely go a mile in the ocean without seeing plastic trash. Uh, we'd go to beaches that we did not anywhere in a complete circumnavigation see a pristine beach uh, without it being covered uh, uh, with trash. But talk about a new environment, uh, after the, uh, the major tsunami, as we sailed across the Indian Ocean, all the beaches were covered with flip-flops but they turned into rafts for crabs. So we have a, a new habitat for crabs as they float around the ocean on, uh, on people's uh, flip-flops. We, we are very much affecting evolution on our planet. Uh, my contention is we need to start doing it in a very deliberate fashion.
I want to come back to John's point about Freeman Dyson and um, I didn't actually disagree with him all that much. The only thing I disagreed with him was that he was talking about natural selection as though it was selection between species, which it is not. However, the extremely interesting point he made is, that, is the transition from a very early stage of evolution, which was much more open source because bacteria still copy and paste information in a kind of promiscuous fashion, which is exactly what we are now in a position to do, both genetic information through people like Craig, but also um, other kinds of information, uh, cultural information. So there is a really interesting sense in which there was, still is, a middle phase of what Dyson called uh, the Darwinian phase, by which what he really meant was the highly ritualized phase of sexual exchange of information um, which is, which as I say is ritualized as opposed to the open source system which bacteria still do and which human biotechnology now does. By ritualized what I mean is that in every generation exactly 50% of the genes of a male and 50% of the genes of a female are put together to make a new individual. Now that is a highly stylized, ritualized, courtly kind of genetic information exchange uh, which, which took over from the bacterial system and which caused the invention of what we call a species because a species just is a collection of individuals who are taking part in this stately gavotte of, of genetic exchange, uh, having usurped the earlier stage of promiscuous shoving genetic information around all over the place, and we're moving back into a new uh, promiscuous phase. However, I wouldn't write off what Dyson called the Darwinian phase. It's been going for a couple of thousand million years, and it's going to go on um, all around us, never mind what humans are doing. I mean, the rest of, the, of life is going to go on like that. You, you did use the phrase uh, schoolboy howler. howler. Schoolboy howler, I uh, did use the phrase schoolboy howler, and that was uh, about that one point about suggesting that natural selection is about one species displacing another species, and that is, that is a schoolboy howler. Uh, a lot of people think that Darwinian selection means one species goes extinct and another species take, takes over. That is not Darwinian selection. That is species extinction. It's a totally different kind of process. Uh, speaking uh, speak, uh, speak of Freeman, uh, he still maintains he's correct. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? So I said, speaking for Freeman, he still maintains he's correct. Uh, one uh, interesting aspect is this is a debate uh, that took place uh, Richard wasn't there, email, but it was a, a conference. And it's in science, debate is the way people work together, the way they advance their ideas. It's usually civil. In this case, it was very good natured. Um, the two major German newspapers, the Sudetia Zeitung and Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, were present, and they both ran a feuilleton features on the event, and uh, one of them said, if this discussion was in Germany, there'd be riots and fistfights. And uh, you all seem so calm. Let me pick up on a point that Richard was making about uh, this, the simplistic notions about Darwinian evolution. In fact, it was one of the biggest surprises for the scientific community, what we found in the environment uh, most people expected just one dominant species. Uh, what we found were thousands, to ten th tens of thousands, very closely related organisms, all basically the same uh, linear set of genes, tremendous variation in those genes, uh, but there was not one dominant one. Uh, there was this community of related organisms where perhaps none of them had gone extinct, uh, or if they had, uh, there were literally thousands of ones to replace them. Uh, the problem we've had, I think, with looking at evolution, uh, I think it's been overly simplified because we've always been looking at the visible world, not the absolute majority of life on this planet, which is in the invisible world. 
So in one milliliter of seawater, there's a million bacteria and 10 million viruses. In the air, in the